It's a very special place, it's very unique. We didn't have any concept that we could fail. I'm very proud of the work that NCLR has done. It was like my angel and opened my door to my new life. We have done things that no one thought were possible. Zachary was able to go back to his friends preschool and say, look, you know, now my parents are married just like yours are. It was an amazing moment to know that I was part of the organization that made that happen. We talk about a case that we took that nobody else wanted to take, that we have the vision to take, and we change the world that way. I can't even think about a world. I can't even imagine a world without NCLR. Luckily, none of us were trying to get rich. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> The National Center for Lesbian Rights was born of a belief that we could do the impossible. <laughs> well, it was 1977, and women were coming out in sort of record numbers. And that meant that the is family issues and issues confronting lesbians, there were huge need to address those issues, and nobody else was doing it. NCLR's founding had a lot to do with mothers whose shoulders we stand on, Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon. When Donna Hitchens was a law student, Del Martin brought her a file of stories that they had heard from women around the country who had lost custody of their children. Del puts this file down in front of Donna and says, you're gonna be a lawyer. You have to do something about this. We decided to join forces and we called it the Lesbian Rights Project. When we were founded 30 years ago, the main focus was lesbian mom custody cases. But very quickly, we began doing work more broadly. We were the first organization to win the right to a second parent adoption, to launch a youth project, immigration project, homophobia and sports project, do a huge amount of transgender legal advocacy, we have an elder law project, and each of the program areas in which we do our work has been groundbreaking, and all of it together has helped transform the place of LGBT people in this culture. People should be able to marry and pass on what they have and share their lives with who they care about. Personally, I support the National Center for Lesbian Rights because it stands for social justice. The work that NCLR is doing in the world directly impacts me as a gay man because it is so much about recognition of family, valuing family. My partner and I have two small children and as parents we're very concerned about protecting them. When that adoption was finalized we became equal parents from the get-go and our ability to do that is testament to the family law that is the backbone of NCLR's work. NCLR is built on a feminist base, yes. which means all of the um, struggles are interrelated. The other distinguishing factor of NCLR is that it's the diverse board, because many of us come from those communities, and, and we are aware of the struggles and the challenges. I think NCLR is the heart and the conscience of the movement. Our community has poor people among us, has older people, has, has young people, has people who don't have the benefit of a U.S. passport. And we are not leaving anybody behind. I'm coming from Mexico, Mexico City. Back those days, you know, I was totally afraid, uh, insecure, you know, about my gender. Somebody take the right, you know, like to attack me, mutilate me, rape me. Uh, and trying to kill me. I was living in the dark, petrified. Uh, basically, I was feeling like I was dead. What NCLR do for me, it's, um, it's like uh, digging totally in, top, in this hole, pull me out, and give me the strength to keep going. Thank you, NCLR. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, people used to sort of come up to us and say how courageous we were to do this kind of work. But the people who were truly courageous were the clients who were willing to go forward even when the odds were against them. It was our privilege 
to stand up in their behalf and to be able to speak the words, but theirs were the brave stories. Sharon Smith and Diane Whipple was my partner and my best friend. And even as I say that, that does not begin to describe the depth of our love and relationship. The time has passed when the law could deny the dignity of our relationships. So it really is a contest on some days to win a case. But overall, the contest is to change this culture so that we can live freely, openly, embraced, and celebrated. When Kate took on Jerry Falwell, do you guys remember that? She had kind of a you know, funky 80s hairdo, but she was on national TV and she took on Jerry Falwell. And I remember thinking, Wow. Kind of about, we're not talking about your civil rights. We're simply saying that we do not want the gay and lesbian lifestyle paraded in the living rooms of America's homes as an acceptable alternative lifestyle. Let me just say, as a lesbian and the executive director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights, what lesbians and gay men seek is the same kind of access, safety, and security that every other American enjoys, and to not be vilified, to not be punished, to not suffer based on our sexual orientation. It's an agenda of human rights. It's not some specialized agenda. Let me, let me ask the know, Reverend Fallwell. And, and I don't you know, uh, Geraldine, I don't know of anyone who is a reasonable person who doesn't agree with Kate on that last statement. One of the most important cases that is front and center on our docket right now is our representation of 12 LGBT couples in California seeking once and for all to end discrimination in marriage. Barring same-sex couples from marriage and creating a separate status for gay people violates the most basic protections in our state constitution. Del Mart and Phyllis Lyon were the first couple issued a license in San Francisco. They had to be the first couple. The day the marriage license was issued to them was two days before their 50th anniversary as a couple. With this ring? With this ring, this ring. I be with. I be with. By virtue of this authority vested in me by the state of California, I now pronounce you spouses for life. <laughs> now you know. That same sense of doing the impossible, making great change in the lives of people is what has been a hallmark of our work and our sense of ourselves as an organization for 30 years. There was a moment, I think back in the 70s, when I hoped we wouldn't need to be around. But obviously that need is just as great today as it was back then. You know, when you look out at the world today and particularly at this country, we are just ruled right now by fear. We are, I mean, that's the dominant emotion in the country. What NCLR says is another emotion is hope. It's belief in ourselves. It's the power of love from community to community, from neighbor to neighbor, and from person to person and family to family. So what this country needs is a lot more of the National Center for Lesbian Rights. Yes, we had vision, uh, but I don't think anyone could have imagined the incredible accomplishments of the National Center for Lesbian Rights at 30 years of age.